What's going on, guys? It's your boy, John the Liquidator, coming back with another video. And it looked like there was a lot of people outraged about Caitlin Clark 2024 earnings. For this one here, we got to go all the way up to Indy. Let's get it. Let's go. <laughs> broke earlier this week about Kayla Clark earnings. I just knew it was going to be some people salty. Now, word on the street is that Kayla Clark basically made around $11 million for the year of 2024. Now, I don't know how they coming up with this number, but basically this is word on the street is that she made $11 million and she's one of the highest grossing women athletes in the world hell caitlin clark might be one of the richest women in the world for the year dog she's been grinding man we gotta think she went all the months as soon as she got out of college went straight to the w making money she's making a bag when she was in college then she charged a hundred thousand dollars just to speak for 30 minutes then she all over the place all over the world and i just think it's great you know it's great news for caitlin that she's able to make that much money it's great for her brand her family but there is a lot of people that is not happy that the young superstar is out here getting to the bag. And I'm telling you, though, Caitlin Clark is getting to the bag in a major way. I believe Forrest just listed 30 for 30, under 30 or something. Man, she is hotter than fish grease right now when it comes to making money. That's why she didn't have to do the Unrivaled League. That's why she didn't have to do none of the stuff they wanted her to do during this offseason for the W. Kaylin has done enough. Let her spend her money, enjoy her life, and get more money. Now, with all that being said, remember when I said there was a lot of people not happy? Let's pull up this article right now because I'm telling you, this one had me shot, but I just knew, man. I knew some people was going to feel a type of way about Kayla getting to that bag, and that is exactly what went down. Kayla Clark, WNBA salary news, sports outrage. Kayla Clark is one of the top 10 highest-paid female athletes in the world for the 2024 year. But while that is good news, there is no part that fans are not happy about. On Wednesday, this article release is 20 highest paid female athletes in the year. Kayla Clark landed at number 10, tied with Olympic gymnastic Simone Biles with 11 million in earnings. According to the report, Clark made most of the money from her endorsements, including NIL deals when she was still in college. Like I told y'all, she was getting a bag in college, however. For between her endorsement money and her WNBA salary really caught the attention of many. The Indiana Fever star made just $100,000 from the salary bonus in the WNBA, while the other $11 million were from her brand deals. She has partnerships with Nike, State Forum, Panini, and Gatorade, among others. According to Indy Star, Kayla Clark single-handedly generated 26% of the WNBA entire revenue last year. Also brought in $36 million in economic impact for the city of Indianapolis. Clark only made $76,000. The salary gap between male and female athletes are shameful. Clark, it's bigger than TV, and she's definitely one eyes to the game of basketball. And it's crazy. She's bigger than the WNBA, and if they want to keep her around, they better figure out a way to pay her. And we already knew this, man. We already know Kayla Clark ain't getting the money she deserved in the W. And then you got people hating on her making the $11 million. My God. Y'all can't be mad. Kayla can't win for losing. Moving on to another story. I want to get back to some of that interview of Stephanie White speaking about this upcoming season. Like I told y'all, she said a lot. Let's roll the footage. Like that. Yeah, you know, I think first and foremost, um, just talking basketball, right? Just just having general basketball conversations mm -hmm. uh, about what she's watching, what she likes, you know, what, 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 what are some of the things that, that – what are some of her thoughts from, you know, not just what, what the Indiana Fever have done, but from the game of basketball in general. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 
started watching Caitlin Clark when she was in the eighth grade when I was at Vanderbilt. How about um, that? And then I called a lot of her games in college when she was at Iowa. Um, and so I, I've really watched her continue to learn and grow and um, I have great relationships with her college coaches and, and had multiple conversations with them um, throughout the course of her career about what the next steps would be, right? And what the next level would be. Um, and she's hungry to grow and hungry to get better. And so number one, again, that two-way communication. Um, it's been a long time since I've played. So players that are on the floor, they know, right? Like they get a sense, they get a feel of, of what's working, what's not. Um, you know, my my first conversation with her about X's and O's the other day, I was just like, okay, well, how do you want to improve? Like, what are some of the things that you want to improve on? And then we'll talk about how we want to do that. Um, you know, and then I talked to her about how I think we can use her to help her be more efficient, um, help her be more effective, to help our team be better in general. Uh, you know, she's she's a great player. She's a high IQ player. Mm -hmm. um, she adjusted really quickly to this league. Unbelievably. Um, unbelievably quick, quick to this league. And now it's about becoming not just a great player, but becoming a great leader for this team so that we can win not just a championship, but championships. And what does that look like? Um, you know, and, and for me, too, just as someone who's who's been a part of this league for 25 years, um, who, who's been a part of the Indiana Fever franchise, um, you know, just being there to help her navigate some of the things that she's she's navigating. You know, I, I don't think that any one uh, of us can really probably understand, um, you know, what she goes through on a daily basis. She, she carries a heavy load right um, with with our league and um, with 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 her her abilities, um, certainly. Um, but where we are from this tipping point in the WNBA and, and from popularity that, you know, she's I say she's like Taylor Swift 2.0. Um, cool. and so just just being someone, um, you know, who's been a player in this league, who's navigated, you know, some of the things, not not even close to the scale that she is, but just being a resource, um, you know, for, for her as well. Um, and it's going to help, too, because we'll have former players on our staff that can communicate with her from a basketball standpoint. We can hit her from a lot of different areas. Um, but I also feel like, you know, we, we see the game the same way. Um, we both love the game. We're both competitors. Um, and so so I think it's going to be a smooth transition. Um, and I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, I, I remember when I went to a press conference, when we took the job, we left the Pistons to take the New Jersey Nets job, right? It was a really a bad franchise located in the Meadowlands, if you remember back. Really bad mm -hmm, job. Yeah. And, and but it was a big deal to get Chuck Daly to go there. And we were going to be, that's, in a month or two, it's going to be the Olympic coach of the dream team. And I remember the New York media is there like 500 of them for his press conference on May 28th. I'll never forget it. My son's birthday. And my wife is still pissed that I missed his birthday party, <laughs> you know? And so the New York media says, what makes you a great coach? And he says, I might be a good coach if I have, great players. Yes. Yes. And, and that was like, that was so Chuck, you know, like if I don't have great players, I'm, I'm like everyone else, you know, and watch the, watch my friend, Willie green, the coach of the Pelicans, who's a terrific young coach. He's got his top eight players sitting out yes. because of injuries. Yeah. Sitting out. He's got guys that were not playing anywhere no jobs, no NBA camps. They went in and started the other day in Cleveland. Because here, there, that's Stephanie White. Speaking about Kayla Clark and the future of the team, get down in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts about this. Keep them bills on because, you know, I'm going to bring you news. And until next time, man, shake the haters off. I'm out of here. Peace out. Shake the haters off.